Welcome to the next episode of the Dark Web Deacon. Before we begin, be sure to smash that subscribe button, click the bell to turn on notifications, and check out the latest items in the Dark Web Deacon merch store. There is a link in the video description below, and become a true Dark Web enthusiast. New videos are published every Monday and Thursday. The allure and power of cryptocurrency is that it's a solution to one, empowering individuals to save money and pay each other for services rendered without needing central banks and authorities. And two, it serves as a way to hedge their investments against oligarchs and political imbeciles that have turned their country into a debtor's paradise or who continue to spend money with impunity in order to stay in power. Both are noble and very practical reasons why cryptocurrency has grown from a cypherpunk idea into a modern day version of the tulip craze to a legitimate form of investment, albeit still a high risk one. But what if cryptocurrency is not the solution that will save us from being enslaved by the power elite? What if we the people and tech savvy populist have just created the digital chains by which we and future generations will be enslaved. I'm talking about programmable money, made possible by cryptocurrency and blockchain tech. There is no one definition of what is programmable money, but in my view, here is how I would define it. Programmable money is a digital currency tied to a set of one or more contingencies that must be successfully met for a monetary transaction to be completed. So let's look at a few examples of how this could play out in the future so that the idea of programmable money is a little more concrete. So an ethical example, Jack buys a house from Jill, but as part of the deal, Jill must provide a home and termite inspection before Jack's payment of the home will execute. Jill uses programmable money to pay for the inspections that is tied to Jack's programmable money transaction. Jill's payments provide the only needed validation for Jack to take ownership of the house. No additional paperwork or brokers are needed to be involved. Now a more ethically blurry example. Your doctor and your health insurance company decide to support and help you maintain a healthy diet after your recent heart attack. So you're only allowed to buy bacon once a month with your programmable money. Any other transaction will be denied. Now, a more downright dangerous example. You've been vaxxed due to a recent outbreak of a disease. You have had a few health complications due to the vaccination. And you want to wait a little bit longer than the approved government accepted timeline to get several booster shots. This anti-science opinion is not acceptable by those in power. Your programmable money allows you to buy basic food groups and pay rent, but has been disabled for you to pay for travel, entertainment, or non-essential items until you comply. So how close is programmable money to becoming a reality? Lyle Brainerd, a member of the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, told an audience in 2020 that the Federal Reserve was experimenting with hypothetical digital dollars for research purposes, according to Bloomberg. Brainerd also said the Federal Reserve has partnered with research teams from the Boston Federal Reserve and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in a multi-year effort to build and test a hypothetical digital currency oriented to central bank uses. This idea would be that a network of consumer digital wallets, perhaps associated with a government ID, like a social security number, with an ability to receive digital dollar deposits directly from a central bank, or conversely, to have digital dollars taken out of that same bank. The US Federal Reserve published a white paper in June of 2021, going into detail of how programmable money can become a reality. I will put a link in the video description below. So here's the concluding statement in the white paper. What is more important than the specific technical approach is the guarantee that the system will in fact cohere into a unitary product offering rather than a service offering associated with otherwise independent non-programmable digital money. How I translate that statement is this. 
No more buying anything with cash or non-programmed currency of any kind. That is the future end goal. Programmable digital currency would be the ultimate institutional control system for the modern world. It's buying on everything you do by way of transaction data. The use of digital wallets and accounts linked to a government ID would thus further tighten any government's grip on its citizens. All of this explains why digital currency is absolutely coming in many people's view. Not just for the United States, but for all industrialized countries. The hypothetical power, visibility, corruption, and control inherent in such a tool will prove impossible to resist. So, will cryptocurrency and blockchain be the savior of humankind? Or will it be a sword of Damocles hanging over all our heads, ready to drop and disable our ability to freely buy goods and services that we want at any moment? And if we dare to speak out or speak up against those in power, or if we want to buy something that is not approved by those in power, they can quickly disable our programmable money. Thanks for watching, and as always, please like, subscribe, and provide comments and turn on notifications by clicking the bell in order to check out future videos published twice a week.